Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. Today I am reviewing a pen from Aurora as you can see here by the box. Uh, this is the Aurora Talentum Black Ops. Now this is a, a rather nice pen uh, and a pen that I have really really enjoyed using for the last few weeks particularly in preparation for this review. Let's have a look here at the packaging quickly. So this is a cardboard sleeve that goes over the uh, the cardboard box, a reflection of my lights because it's very shiny cardboard. Um, Aurora, yeah, Italian passion, sign of distinction. So as you take that cardboard top off, you're shown another box. Now this has one of those open flap sort of boxes that allows you to take the internal box out. And it's this nice sort of um, fake leathery sort of box, which uh, is nice. It's got Aurora there on the front. Now, uh, as you open up the control box, you see the pen. And it's a really lovely pen in there in the top of the box. You get Aurora again. So this is the Aurora Talentum, and this is, as I said, the black ops version, as you can see from the matte black finish and the black uh, plated furniture. Aurora there on the band. Okay, in this box, when you take the uh, fake bottom out, you get the... Uh, little sort of book about the pen and how to fill it and all of that sort of stuff and then two cartridges uh, full-size cartridges now proprietary cartridges and converter it does come with a converter as well so you get everything you need to get going let's look at the pen okay here is the Aurora Talentum Black Ops now this is a lovely satin black resin uh, the resin is treated in a way to give it that finish and it feels beautiful in the hand it really and it looks absolutely stunning so I'm going to run over the parts of this pen, um, I'll do the little writing sample as usual, uh, and then uh, talk about some pros and cons. Okay, top of the pen, flat top and flat bottom, I like that. They're slightly curved, as you can sort of see there, uh, but more or less a flat top, uh, with this sort of black plated uh, material down to the clip, which is built into the cap there. Springy enough, functional, all of that sort of stuff. Beautiful black satin resin, and then the band there that says Aurora, Italy. Uh, now. Aurora make every element of this pen in-house, which they, which is remarkable really, including the nib and feed. So they are, uh, you know, basically only used by Aurora. So then after the cap, uh, you get the barrel, tapers down to another black um, metal end there. Now it unscrews in about one and a half screws and reveals this stunning 14 karat gold, solid gold, black plated nib. With some lovely scroll work on it, it's a 14k there, Aurora, really nice nib and a nice design, and then the feed there, as you can see. Some places say this is an ebonite feed, I'm not entirely sure. Um, so the section, as you can see, tapers to a flare, stops the fingers running down onto the nib, all of that sort of stuff. Nice size section, there's a metal band there uh, where the, pen un the body of the pen unscrews to reveal the converter there. Um, and nice, nice tight screws on the barrel. That's never, that's not sort of coming loose at all. Um, threads there, smooth, nothing sort of too rough under the fingers, and a little step down off the barrel there, just where the cap meets it when it's um, capped. It's a nice sort of section. It's a nice size. It's a nice size pen in the hand as well. Uh, you don't feel those threads or anything like that, and they are relatively smooth to. Uh, to post. My only concern is when you get a little bit out, they are sort of a little sort of slack in the threads, um, but that's not a problem. Once it's once it's locked down, it's pretty well locked down. Um, okay, so I have this with the medium nib, uh, and it's a lovely medium. It's a lovely wet, smooth nib. Uh, you'll see that in the writing sample. Uh, but let's just do a few sort of uh, little size comparisons first. Oh, we'll do the measurements and then the size comparisons. So. Uh, Oh, I should quickly say, the pen does post, as you'll see in a second, uh, and it posts quite securely and doesn't back weigh the pen at all. Um, if anything, it's a little bit long, uh, but perfectly comfortable to use, posted or unposted. I choose to write with this unposted, as I do with most of my pens. Okay, measurements. Uh, it is a, a, a about 137 millimeters when it's capped, 132 uncapped, so it's a good size. Uh, and about 159 when it's posted, because it does post relatively deeply. It's not too long. 
The diameter of the section is about 10 and a half millimeters there in the middle. So it's a nice sort of, it's a nice size section. The pen weighs about 31 grams. So not super heavy, but certainly not light. Not super heavy for, not super light even for a resin uh, bodied pen. Uh, 20 of that is in the body of the pen and 11 of that is in the cap. Now the converter uh, holds about a millimeter, a milliliter of ink. They are proprietary, as I said, so you can't use standard international. Uh, and a standard Aurora uh, ink cartridge holds about one and a half milliliters of ink. And you can get them in the black and the blue, and I think the blue black as well, uh, which is the three colors that Aurora make. So uh, let's now look at it in comparison to a couple of other pens. The first thing we'll do is compare it to the Alami Safari. So you can see that it's a sort of a decent sort of size pen. The Safari is not a huge pen, but it's certainly a decent size in comparison to that. A couple of other pens here are the uh, a couple of Italian pens, the Leonardo Momento Zero, uh, Leonardo Officiano Italiana Momento Zero, uh, which is about the same sort of size, uh, but you know, sort of not quite a pen in the same league as the Aurora here. And then the last one we have is the Visconti Homo Sapiens. I'll just swap those around so we get it next to it. Uh, another nice sort of black pen, slightly bigger. It's an oversized, slightly oversized pen. Um, but those will put you, give you a reasonable idea of sort of what we're looking at in terms of size of this pen. Okay, let's do a writing sample now. Here we have Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, so a nice paper. And here we have the Aurora Talentum Black Ops. This has a 14 carat gold medium nib. Uh, the ink, as I said, is Lamy Dark Lilac. Okay, so as you can hear, there is a little bit of feedback on this nib. Now, that is not unusual for Aurora, um, but it is definitely a smooth nib. And one thing I can absolutely say with full assurance is this is a wet, wet nib. Like... It's laying down a lot of ink, which is really nice. Let's do that little writing sample. So you can definitely hear uh, that feedback there. Um, but this pen, as I said, it's smooth. It writes well, it writes consistently, and it keeps up. Now that is not intended to be neat, that is not intended to be legible, it is intended to be quick. And you can see it keeps up beautifully. Uh, so in terms of uh, flex, this is a gold nib, so you are gonna get a little bit of uh, not line variation, but a little bit of sort of softness out of the nib. Uh, but as you can see, it railroads because it's not designed uh, for that. Reverse writing, it's okay. Uh, it would certainly dry out after a little while, but it does lay down a much sort of, uh, you know, a much finer line if that is what you need. So this is a pen that writes beautifully under its own weight. The balance of the pen is nice in the hand. It doesn't lead down super heavily down towards the nib, but it is certainly not back weighted. It just feels nice in the hand. It feels like you're not actually even holding a pen in a lot of ways because it is a well-balanced, easy to write with pen. And because of that performance on the page, it will be a pleasure to write with. So let's talk about the pros and the cons of the Aurora Talentum. Okay, let's start with the cons. This is not a cheap pen, not at all. Full retail price is 495 American from one particular retailer. Now that is not a cheap pen. You can get this at uh, retail price for like at, at you know um, street price for about 396 American. 
which you'd want it to be a gold nib at that price and you want it to be a special pen, which it is at this price. Like this is an Italian pen. This is a hand, well not handmade, but like in-house made pen. This isn't a mass produced Chinese pen or bits being flown in from elsewhere. Every element of this pen, nib and feed included, are made in-house by Aurora. Every element, converter, everything. So you are not getting bits and pieces from original parts manufacturers being sent over and the pen constructed. This is made in Italy, so you are putting an extra price at it. It is a unique looking pen. Uh, it's a unique, as I said, it's a unique design. It's got elements of it that are absolutely 100% Aurora, like that clip. And uh, as I said, also that nib, which is just beautiful. And it writes so well. So you are paying for something that is more than just a Jinhao. And you'd expect that at this price point, and you get what you pay for. I truly believe with a pen like this, you get what you pay for. Another con, and something that I think is almost unforgivable, is the fact that it uses proprietary cartridges and converter. Now, in a modern world, there is no reason why everything, like, Cartridges and converters shouldn't be standard across the line. If you are just using cartridges, you are limited to three colours. Blue, black, and blue-black. So it's not like they have reds and greens and purples and oranges and browns. They have three standard writing colours. So you have to get the converter, and, they, and the, it comes with one, which is great. But if you don't, if this one wears out or whatever, Aurora converters are not inexpensive converters. So you are limited a little bit, and I think proprietary cartridges and converters across all brands are an issue. Just my two cents worth. Um, but the pros of this pen are huge. The gold nib, fabulous. It writes really well. The fact that it's made in-house and it's unique to Aurora, every element is great. It's got a good section. Like, that's a nice design section. It's my sort of preferred sort of section shape uh, with a little flare on the end. It's good, it fits nicely in the hand. It's a good length pen, and it feels really nice in the hand. The weight of the pen is nice, the balance of the pen is nice, and the feeling of this material under your fingers is really beautiful. That satin matte resin is just gorgeous. Then we get, with this nib, you get a smooth, some feedback, but smooth, beautiful wet writing experience. Now, when I say something's not scratchy and there's feedback, scratchy is where the pen digs into the paper. You're actually picking up fibres of the paper, you're scratching the paper. Feedback is where there's just a little bit of sort of, I don't want to say roughness, but where it's not entirely 100% sort of buttery smooth. You just get a little bit of sound on the paper. It lets you know you're writing. And I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. And with an ink like Lamy Dark Lilac, which is a nice wet ink, the writing experience you get with a pen like this is just glorious. So I can't say enough good about this pen. I can say enough bad about proprietary cartridges and converters, but that's not an issue with this pen necessarily, uh, just with the, the brand and the company. But there are many companies like that. Pilot, for example, you know, their, their cartridges are actually better than their converters. But if they were on a standard international, then you'd have many, many more options. So anyway, this was the Aurora Talentum uh, Black Ops with a medium 14 karat gold Nib, I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at, at the underscore under, at the underscore offstage underscore me, or you can comment on any of my videos here or drop me an email. It's all listed down below. If you've got products you think I should be looking at, let me know. If there's a way you'd like to support the channel, get in touch and let's see what we can do. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing. And I'll talk to you later.